Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Panzer Dragoon Orta for the original Xbox. This is a fantastic game created by Sega uh, to follow up to uh, the old Sega Saturn Panzer Dragoon games. And it is just absolutely amazing. And I, I would argue it's easily the best in the whole franchise. Granted, Saga was a role-playing game, which was vastly different in that regard. But uh, <laughs> as far as rail shooters go, this is about as good as you get. Um, and it is uh, is an, an awesome, awesome game. Uh, hold on a second. All right, much better. It looks like I uh, forgot to plug my headphones in. But uh, let's check out the options menu real quick, and um, we'll get right into the game. So up, down is normal, vibration off, instrument mode, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go ahead and get right in. So I'm going to make a, a disclaimer, or a couple of disclaimers for this Let's Play. Um, we are going to be splitting this Let's Play into multiple parts. Uh, normally I don't do this, but Panzer Dragoon Orta will take you... Uh, I think about two hours and 40 minutes to go through from start to finish with skipping all the cutscenes. Um, what I'm going to be doing is actually, aside from this very beginning part, uh, I'm going to be chopping out all the cutscenes and I'm going to be chopping out all the load sequences just to speed up the pacing of this Let's Play. Um, but I'm going to just be skipping through all this stuff in the beginning and going through the load screen here. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a multiple part Let's Play. It's going to be probably a two part, possibly a three part because the final boss still gives me some trouble. Um, and it might take us a couple of tries to do that. And that's like a 15 minute long battle by itself. So, um, but I guess we'll see once we get there. So, uh, for those of you guys that never played the old Panzer Dragoons, uh, Panzer Dragoon is a rail shooter. Uh, it came out on the Sega Saturn in 1995. Uh, it had a sequel, a uh, follow-up sequel a year or two later. It might have been two years later. Um, and uh, both games were awesome. Uh, they were like Star Fox, but you were on a dragon. And uh, you had more fantastical, um, I guess you could say, uh, locations. Panzer Dragoon, the whole series, had a very, very unique art style. And... Um, it's just, it's a series that has, that stood out when it was new, um, but it still stands out, you know, many, many years later, decades later. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Orta is technically the third rail shooter in the series, not counting the, uh, the weird Game Gear release in Japan, uh, but it's technically the fourth game in the franchise, unless, again, you want to count that weird Game Gear game in Japan. Um, it's like Panzer Dragoon Mini or something like that. And um, um, it is just, it came out in 2000, pretty sure Orta came out in 2003 uh, in North America. And uh, man, was it awesome when it came out. And uh, it is still quite awesome now. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, Panzer Dragoon, the games, they are kind of like Star Fox, except you're on a dragon. It's a pretty good uh, comparison. Um, the big difference between Panzer Dragoon and, say, the first Star Fox is that you get homing lock-on functionality. So you've got a cursor that tells you where you're shooting, um, but the best way to do damage in this game is by locking onto your enemies. And uh, by locking on the multiple enemies at once, you can obviously take down more enemies faster. And um, Orda changes things up even more by allowing you to press Y to switch through a variety of different dragon styles. Uh, so you have three different styles, like this style right here gives you this lock-on functionality. Uh, not just lock-on functionality, but like sort of like this auto-fire lock-on functionality, and it can shoot down bullets automatically for you really quickly. Uh, so really good little defensive um, power-up. You've got this heavy style, which makes your dragon move a lot slower, but your attack is way more powerful than any other form. Uh, so this form is not very good if you're trying to dodge stuff. Um, and then you've got your regular one, which is sort of like your good mid-range, all-around good dragon form. Uh, it's got the most lasers that can shoot out at once, and pretty much the fastest. And yeah. You've also got these crash attacks, at least I'll call them that, and once I get past this part, I'll, I'll explain it. So 
So on the bottom left hand portion of the screen, you've got this bar that's flashing. That's basically like a super meter, if you want to call it that. Um, and it'll unleash this bomb attack. And there's three different types that you can use uh, depending on the dragon form. So this form I have will basically just shoot lasers at everything across the screen. When you do this attack, you are invincible. So this is extremely, extremely useful, particularly on boss fights. And uh, so you're going to see me using this, uh, this ability very much throughout the course of the game. If you use it while you're on your third dragon form, which is what I have right now, let's just call it the agility dragon form, the fast dragon. I don't even know what the actual names are, but um, uh, when you use it when you're in this form, um, you actually get some health back when you use the, uh, the bomb attack. The attack that happens when you use it in this form isn't nearly as powerful as it is on the other forms, but the trade-off is that you get some health back. And in a way, I think that's even more important than you know, defeating bosses faster or enemies faster or, or whatnot. It just, it depends on your play style, but because I'm not as familiar with this game as I used to be when it first came out, you know, it's probably been about 12 to 13 years since I last beat this game, not counting my stream session of it uh, this past week. But uh, uh, it's, it's definitely a good crutch because you do fill up your super meter pretty quickly. You're going to be using it a couple times through each stage. So you can see it's been uh, not even a minute really since I've, I used it and it's about uh, a third of the way filled up now. So uh, like I said, you're gonna be using it a lot. Uh, another interesting mechanic that was actually added to this game that was not in the previous Panzer Dragoons, uh, at least the rail shooters, was the, the boost mechanic. You'll also notice that on your bar in the bottom left hand portion of the screen, you've got a yellow set of meters and this is basically boost or slow down. You can also press B to slow down and you'll sort of veer backwards a little bit. And uh, you can use that for positioning. Uh, it's required to use it later on in the game to avoid uh, certain obstacles. There's going to be obstacles in the game where you have to boost forward if you want to avoid them without taking damage. Uh, typically, if you get hit by an obstacle like that, you don't take that much damage. Um, but a lot of little damage uh, over the course of the game adds up pretty quickly. So you definitely don't want to be too reckless in this game. Um, your heavy dragon form, which I'm in right now, actually does not have uh, boost functionality. So something to keep in mind when you're using this dragon form. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to our light dragon so we can get that health boost. So we just got a little bit of health back for using our bomb attack. Uh, but now we're starting back over with our meter. Um, the fast dragon is not good for normal attacking. Like, it's got this automatic lock-on function, but it's super, super weak. So you really only want to use this dragon for greater momentum uh, and speed and movement uh, if you're trying to dodge stuff, as well as shooting down little popcorn enemies and their projectiles. Oops, I messed that up. Like, all those bullets there, it would have been great to have the, uh, the light dragon. Just like that. You can actually get into a rhythm of switching between dragons. So I've got the medium dragon, and I'm just going to shoot these down manually. Hope I don't get hit. That was success. But if I go heavy dragon, and then I can immediately switch to the fast dragon if an enemy starts shooting out uh, lots of little projectiles. Uh, I haven't mentioned this yet. By pressing L and R, you can actually rotate around. And that's also extremely important functionality in this game. Let's go ahead and just use our crash attack. Oh, that was bad. You gotta be careful with this, uh, the fast dragon, because, uh, the lock-on functionality sometimes has a mind of its own. And so you gotta watch out for that. Uh, basically it just kinda locks on to whatever it feels like. See, I'm not even aimed at it, and it's locked onto it. So you gotta watch out for that. Be very careful about that.
it's really best used for taking down uh, bullets like that. So this game really requires you to get into the groove of constantly switching up. And uh, that's really how this game works. Okay, so we're going to go back up and I'm going to go ahead and use uh, my bomb attack here, but with the strong dragon. And this does a lot of damage. Bam, pretty much just took him out. And that's it, that's our first level. So one episode down. You also notice your dragon actually changes uh, throughout the course of the game as you level up. So again, that was probably a quick jump between stages. Uh, once again, I'm splicing out all the load sequences and so, so forth. Over the course of the game, that's probably going to save us a good 10 minutes of uh, video time. That's with skipping the cutscenes normally. Um, Cutscenes come in, and if you want to skip them, they, they fade out slowly. Um, there's usually pauses between different sections of cutscenes. There's, there's actual in-game cutscenes, and there's full motion video that happens a couple times throughout the game. And then there's, um, uh, there's text sequences as well. So there's actually a lot of story uh, to this game, and it's actually really cool. I like the story. It follows up on the old games very well. Um, kind of gives you a very heartfelt uh, experience as well, which the old Panzer Dragoon games had a tendency of doing, even though it may not have been intentional on the developer's part, but you just get this really like warm feeling playing the old Panzer Dragoon games, um, you know, by watching their intros and then beating the games and... Uh, people that have completed those games will probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and that's one reason why like, I, I enjoy the old Panzer Dragoon games so much, is they give me this feeling that few other games have managed to give me over pretty much my entire, let's say, career of <laughs> playing video games. Uh, not really a career per se, but you know what I mean. You know, the course of my life playing video games. And... Um, so Orda gives that feeling just as well, and through many of its uh, story segments and cutscenes, um, as well as its ending and, and so forth. Um, so for those of you guys that actually want to see the story in this game, you know, you can feel free to go check out a full long play of this game. There's a lot of those on YouTube without um, commentary or anything like that, so you can just uh, enjoy the game. Um, but really, the best way to enjoy this game, honestly, is to just buy it, because it is such an amazing game. And uh, I, I really, again, highly recommend checking this game out if you guys have not. Uh, I'd argue it's one of the best games on the original Xbox. And when it comes to like action, um, fast-paced action arcade-style games from this generation, it's at the top of its league there too. Uh, it's absolutely an incredible game. And uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend checking this out if you're into rail shooters and action arcade style games uh, to begin with. If you're a fan of uh, Sega games from the Dreamcast era, um, this is a must play. Uh, it's obviously the Saturn era too, but this has that Dreamcast polish uh, in a way. And I don't know if this was originally uh, planned to be a Dreamcast game. That might have been the story. I, I'm pretty sure there were several Dreamcast games that were originally in development, like Toe Jam & Earl 3, that's actually a no one, because the prototype was uh, leaked recently, in the last couple of years, and that was originally being developed on Dreamcast, and eventually got moved to the original Xbox. Uh, so Panzer Dragon Order might have been um, in the same boat. Um, this one actually looks considerably better than just about anything you'd get on Dreamcast, though. Uh, the texture quality is pretty good, Everything has this nice look to it. 60 frames a second constant. There's just lots of good stuff going on here in this game. And um, it's really a beautiful looking game too. And you get, it gets even better uh, the farther along you get into the game. It is... Uh, we need the boost right here. Boost forward. Otherwise those guys will hit you. So that's one of the first instances in the whole game 
where you have to actually boost if you don't want to take damage. And uh, that's something you learn as you uh, play through the game. So I'm going to uh, use my fast dragon boost power as well, because I want to get my health back up a little bit. Um, some of these bosses are pretty tough if you're like me and you're pretty rusty at, uh, at the game. I am uh, extremely rusty. I'm probably not going to look that rusty now, because this will be my third playthrough in the last two days. Uh, I've been streaming a lot of Twitch this week, and uh, I've been playing a lot of original Xbox, including lots and lots of Panzer Dragoon Orta. So, so we should be able to beat this game without a problem, um, but if you're not on your A game, this game will uh, do some damage to you. It's, it's a tough game. Um, it's a little overwhelming compared to the old ones, actually. Uh, it's definitely more challenging. Uh, but it's the kind of game where, you know, just a little bit of practice here and there, and, and, you know, all of that anxiety you might feel from the craziness of the game will probably go away very quickly. It's one of those games where just practice makes perfect, and you don't actually need that much practice to really get familiar with this game and start becoming comfortable with it. Uh, it's also got an easy mode. I'm actually playing on the default setting, which is how I like to play my games. Unless the games are just super, super easy, and then I'll put them on hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, I typically play these games on the normal settings. Uh, there is a hard mode for people that are just, you know, much more hardcore. And um, want to try to take their game further. But uh, even though this game can be overwhelming... I should have boosted there, by the way. He just hit me. Uh, even though this game can be overwhelming... Um... You know, again, you can just put it on easy and play it that way. No shame in that. So. So these guys that come out from the sides, these big green flying things, they just are constantly shooting at you and you gotta watch out for them. Of course you got these little bat things too. But I really wanna focus on these, these big green guys. Now your heavy dragon is not very good for his standard shot. Um, basically, every time you tap A, you'll shoot out just a, you know, a dedicated shot. Unfortunately, it's not a great dragon for those purposes, so, you know, it's lock on is the most powerful in the game, however. And, uh, so, you know, you don't want to always be using the heavy dragon. You want probably a more balanced dragon if enemies are going to be shooting at a lot of projectiles. Or you want to get in the habit of locking on with the heavy dragon and then immediately switching over to your fast dragon so you can uh, so you can lock on to any little mini projectiles that come your way and you can take them out. Uh, most projectiles in this game... Most... Most projectiles in this game you can just take down with a shot. There are some like uh, dedicated laser attacks and stuff like that that you can't really do anything with. Okay, so this is uh, the first time in the game where they incorporate um, the movement or sorry boss rotation mechanic. This was kind of like this was in Panzer Dragoon Saga actually or it was similar in that game where you could actually rotate around your bosses. Uh, you'll notice on the top right hand portion of the screen you've got blue arrows and red arrows. Uh, the blue arrows, to go in that direction, you have to press X. And then the red arrows, uh, to activate that direction, you press B, which is your slowdown move. Every time you do that, you'll notice one of your meters, uh, your yellow meters, gets taken away. 
And so you're going to be using this a lot for the rest of the game on boss fights. Pretty much every boss fight from here on out requires you to rotate around them. Oh, that was a bad time to use that. Because uh, that caused the cutscene to happen. And boss cutscenes are unskippable. Like, I'm trying to skip through this and it's not working, so... Oh, look at that! It actually gave me... It didn't use up all my meter. Oh... Of course, he switches around just like that. That was... Cr close. He was attacking me while I was doing my attack. A little bit of memorization will go a long ways on bosses like this. Um, in order to dodge his attacks appropriately. Very typical of Japanese uh, action arcade style games. They're very uh, pattern heavy. And they seem overwhelming at first, but once you get the, a hang of the patterns, you you familiarize yourself with how the bosses operate, they're really not that bad at all. Um, So from here on out, I'm going to be using my Fast Dragon um, boost attack. Or bomb attack, or whatever you want to call it. Because um, my life is pretty low. I've been getting a little reckless. I've hit a lot of enemies that I didn't mean to hit. And sometimes a good strategy is to not even switch up. Just use your uh, medium... Um, medium power dragon. Oops. No, wrong way, wrong way. What is going on? This is where things can get disoriented. Disorienting. I have a, out of boost, man. I am doing really bad. Like I, we've got the potential to die now. I've done so bad. So if we can get our boost meter up one more time, we might have a chance of not dying. Just like that, man. That was close. I don't ever have such a hard time with this boss. But he's also switching to the sides, which he doesn't usually do. He usually switches either forwards or backwards on the river, not not towards the rocks on the sides. I've never seen him... Uh, of, of the multiple times I beat the game the last, um, last couple of days, he hasn't switched over to the rocky side. So that was... that threw me off. That definitely threw me for a loop. So this is story we're not able to skip through. There are some cutscenes like this where you're just stuck watching them. Which is fine. You know, normally I watch all the cutscenes when I play this game, but... For the purpose of this Let's Play, we can't skip through them. Uh, so that's a bad rank. I wanted to try to get, uh, at least a B rank overall. Alright, Episode 3. The Fallen Ground. So these little guys we encountered that were fighting that boss alongside me, uh, they think I'm a bad guy, all of a sudden. And so we have to do battle with them. And then after that, they realize we're not a bad guy. And um, they take us through uh, a little bit of a roller coaster ride through uh, some areas. And this is especially where some of the old Pez Dragoon um, familiar objects come into play, you know, some of the art style and, 
Uh, by the end of the game, it's totally looks like the old Panzer Dragoons, and uh, fans of the uh, old Panzer Dragoons that may not have played this game will know exactly what I'm talking about once you once you see them. This was not one of those, uh, you know, games that was a classic game name and name only. It was a full-on Panzer Dragoon game uh, to the T. It's just... They don't make them like they used to, is what I was telling people on stream, and this is a perfect example of that. Um, So using your heavy dragon on bosses like this is much better than using any of the other dragons because uh, you can only lock on to each of these enemies once. So if you can only lock on to them once, you might as well use your strongest laser. So these things you can shoot down. You can either try to use your regular shot or use your speedy dragon to do it, and it'll lock onto these guys automatically. This is the sort of roller coaster ride stuff I was telling you about. You just start flying through lots of things. This is very typical of Panzer Dragoon. Uh, in the old Panzer Dragoons 1 and 2, you were just flying through stuff left and right. Especially in the uh, the cave levels. So again, every time on this level, basically what I'm going to do is when I get my um, bomb attack or my super meter all the way up, uh, I'm going to be using the uh, the fast dragon because I you know I keep getting hit I'm taking lots of damage ah and this is one part in the game where like the camera is a little wonky um, one of the only issues with this game that I can think of is uh, when you have to press LRR to move around you. Um, basically, I would try to demonstrate it perfectly right now, but there's enemies around me, so I can't describe it immediately. Um, cool, we just leveled up the, uh, weak dragon. Uh, actually, if you press start, uh, you've got this meter, these, sorry, not meters, but these, uh, stats on the right-hand side of the screen and tell you how many power-ups you have per form. So, what I'd like to do is try to get all the forms sort of, like, even out, uh, try to level them up. Uh, evenly as you kill certain enemies little power-up uh, sort of capsules will fly into you and It'll add a power-up to whatever form you're currently on So you see if you want your oh apparently it's glide wing is what the the, the fast dragons called um, If you want your glide wing powered up You need to switch from your base wing or heavy wing over to the glide wing before that power-up hits you Otherwise, it's gonna collect on say your base wing or your heavy wing um, 
so yeah, that's basically just what happened. I I intentionally switched to the Glide Wing. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna call it the Fast Dragon. That's just easier for me. Um, to power it up. If you look in the bottom right hand portion of the screen now, you'll notice. Whoops. Uh, until the story part started. Hold on. Okay, there it is. It only shows you when you um, when you switch. But basically, what's going on down there is every little slot is a power-up slot. And... So, for each of these, except for the glide wing, I need three more power-ups to level it up to the next level. And, uh, your firepower starts to change, your dragon... The look of your dragon changes. Uh, your shots get more powerful. And this is the part where we need to boost and kill these guys from behind. And of course, they shoot projectiles, just like most other guys in this game do. And this was a section where I had to slow down so they could go past me. A good bet is to, if you're having trouble, just power up your uh, your main shot your base wing over and over again because these lasers can get pretty powerful and uh, you can shoot more and more of them out uh, as you as you power up so in the old Panzer Dragoons this was basically your stock dragon you had your main shot here uh, and this sort of medium grade uh, level laser uh, Panzer Dragoon 2 is actually the game that introduced the super meter. And these guys, in a way, actually have a, um, attack pattern that's a little bit similar to, uh, the final boss of Panzer Dragoon 2 for the Sega Saturn. We're gonna use the heavy dragon for this one. If, if these are, uh, you know, dedicated enemies that don't do a whole lot, using the heavy dragon is definitely the way to go. But once you start getting a lot of little enemies coming out uh, alongside them, uh, it becomes very, very tricky. Got them all. So for this guy, I think it's best to just stick with your your main laser, your main dragon form. I try to switch to the heavy wing once in a while, but it just doesn't seem to work as well in this boss because he's constantly jumping over you and stuff like that. So it's probably best to just stick with your base wing. And this is where the bosses start to become very typical Japanese, which is really cool. They start becoming really creative. This guy, you know, he's crawling on all fours right now, but he eventually starts walking on his hind legs, and he starts, uh... It's just, you'll see what I mean. It's just really good stuff. I love the boss fights in this game. They're all very good.
taking a lot of damage still, though, so I'm not doing a very good job with that. Oh, I just tried boosting, but my meter wasn't up. So again, you got to watch out for your meter, too. Sometimes it's best to just switch over to your glide wing because it gets an extra boost meter. And that'll make it so it's a little bit easier to boost. Is he going to switch forms yet? We should be getting close. Yeah, there it is. Or almost. I used that at the wrong time because it didn't do a whole lot of damage to him, but um, I did get some health back at least, so that's really why I use that special attack. I always want that uh, health power up. Oh, I thought a boost would uh, let me dodge that, but apparently not. And him jumping like that reminds me of my cat. My cat is just goofy like that. She just <laughs> she jumps everywhere in my apartment. <laughs> All right, so we used our bomb again. Got a little bit of health back. Oh, of course, I just lost some of it. Not going to make that mistake a second time. Okay, so sitting on his side and milking the shots that way is uh, definitely good. Because what I was doing on my stream earlier in the week was... Uh, Uh, I was basically not really sitting on his side, and I was getting... I wasn't getting a lot of free damage I could have been getting, basically. B rank, I'll take that. I'm not very good with getting A ranks right now. All right, episode four. So we've got these fleets that we can try to take out. If you want to try to get really good ratings in this game, uh, you definitely want to try to take out as much as you can. Um, as you can see, in the um, at the end of each level, it basically tallies up uh, different categories and your performance in different categories. So if you want to try to get an A rank, you want to... Um, 
do the best you can in each category. So one of the categories is just the shoot down ratio, like how many enemies you were able to shoot down in a level. Um, there's also S ranks. I don't know if the main rank can go to S, but each subcategory uh, can go to S ranking as well. I've gotten S on uh, the boss fights once in my playthroughs over the last couple of days. Ideally, you want to shoot down as much as you can, because a lot of enemies, again, they give you power-ups. Getting your power-ups makes life uh, quite a bit easier. See, what I was talking about the camera earlier is that when you press left or right, um, you can only move the camera so far with the D-pad, and then there's a point where you have to press the L or R triggers um, to rotate back around. It's a little cumbersome. It's not that pressing L or R is cumbersome. It's the fact that the camera locks into place and you can't you can't move it any farther. Like. You'll be pushing to get, like, right here I'm holding left, and it, the camera's not rotating around. I had to press left for it to do that. And it's just very, uh, very annoying, because enemies will just whip right around you, but you won't be able to whip around with them, because the camera would basically be, like, locking you into place. It's a little frustrating when things get really fast-paced. Uh, that's really the only complaint I can think about uh, with this game. I mean, pretty much everything about else about this game is just awesome. Um, but that is definitely an issue uh, once things get, get uh, crazy, especially. Not doing a very good job with this shoot down ratio on this level. All right, cool. Just leveled up our main wing again. Sometimes it's best to try to use your heavy wing on certain situations. You know, there's a lot of enemies that'll take, say, two hits with your standard lasers, and then they'll take only one hit with your heavy laser. So this is, again, the camera's getting all crazy right now because uh, it's not letting me move on my own. And as a result, I'm not paying attention to what's coming up ahead of me, which is bad. Sometimes you can smash through certain en enemies with your boost attack as well, so it's something to keep in mind. 
Like all those guys, I just killed them with my single boost attack. So, very important. These guys I kill with my boost attack as well. Just like that. Oh, except that one. Wow, my boost is not happening. Why is it going up so slow? Normally it charges a lot faster. That's interesting. I don't know why it's charging so slow. I wonder if there's a reason for that that I just don't know about. If any of you guys watching are familiar with this game and you do know, feel free to uh, post a comment and let me know. That's right, this is a cutscene. We can skip through that. I would prefer to uh, show you guys all the cutscenes, but I also don't want this to be a three and a half hour long let's play. <laughs> so in a lot of my let's plays, you guys know, I, I do skip through a lot of the story sequences, depending on the game. Most games I try to just skip through it all, so we get a, uh, a shorter let's play overall that you guys might actually be able to sit through in one sitting. And granted, this is going to be a two part let's play. So there will be that, but even then, you know. Alright, so this boss can actually be pretty tricky. Not so much this boss right here, but there's also another sub-boss that comes immediately afterwards. And you have to beat that boss... Um, ...in the same session. They basically count both bosses together. Okay, so now we have to boost up top. You notice my boost power is actually charging up a little bit more now, which is kind of interesting. Whereas that section we were on earlier, it was just really, really slow. So again, I'm not sure if there's something that's affecting that. Maybe like the, uh, the height of my health determines how fast uh, the boost happens. I, I just don't know. I do that. See, I got punished for that. I, I didn't know he was going to do that uh, laser attack again. Actually, what I might do is just... Yeah, let this form do its thing again, because uh, I kind of want to build my super meter up once more, if I can. Because all these, like, little missiles I'm shooting... ...will help me build my super meter, because the next part with the, uh... ...the next sub-boss is actually pretty tough. And I usually have a hard time with that. They do a lot of damage on me. Because we are not gonna get a health boost. So... Yeah, some really sloppy playing on my part. I knew the lasers were going to happen in hindsight, and, but I, I didn't do anything about it. And I used, I panicked actually, and uh, I switched and I used the wrong uh, super melee attack. So these guys, if you can, I like to target a single one. Because each of them has their own uh, health bar, actually. 
Okay, and the second I get some super meter, I'm using it. So I just used it. So you can tell which dragon is actually weaker by uh, the smoke happening behind him. So now I'm going to want to target that one dragon if I can. Sounds like I got it. I don't mind if I'm taking small hits here and there. As long as I can keep focusing on a dragon and just be dishing out lots of damage. Of course, now I can't tell which one I was locked onto, but that's okay. All right, looks like another one is about to bite the dust. So let's focus on that. It's the one on the top left. Super meter's almost there again. All right, so that's two dragons down. Technically, I think they're called dragon mares or something like that. As far as the story is concerned, I'm pretty sure that's those are their names. All right, use our next super. Let's get a little bit of health back for that. This one's about to die, too. I still don't know how to avoid that perfectly. They basically all... gang up and then they dash at you. And earlier, I slowed down and that seemed to help. But that time I boosted and that didn't help. But slowing down wasn't, uh, you know, foolproof either. Because I still get hit, but only got hit by one versus like five. Alright, that might do it. And that did it. Nice. Really cutting it close. Alright. So this level is really cool. It's uh, very reminiscent of the second Panzer Dragoon, where in the very beginning of that game, you're riding on your, your dragon. And so when we're in this, you know, basically, story-wise, you got shot out of the sky. 
and you guys fell to the ground. And uh, so your dragon was heavily damaged, and so basically you can see his wings are almost gone completely. And um, and as such, we're completely powered down as well. Although it looks like the amount of lasers I can lock on with is still the same. And I have no idea what these things are supposed to be. But, uh, they're still fun to kill, either way. They do shoot out these big streams of, uh, sort of like pod-like, fire-like projectiles in big streams, and you want to just shoot them down like this, right here. Fireballs, from it looks like? Fire rocks? I'm not sure. So unfortunately, we don't. We also don't have super meter right here. We're stuck with just basically our stock main shot, and that's pretty much it. Uh, towards the end of the stage, when we get to the boss, we'll actually be able to go back to our main dragon forms. Um, but for the majority of this level, we're we're on the ground just like this. Now, something I didn't really mention earlier on in the game is you have multiple paths you can go through. And... So that gives this game a good bit of replay value on top of the regular replay value it has. There's different routes you can take, you can try to figure them all out. I'm not exactly sure where the route change points are on some levels. On the second level, I know exactly where it is, but on like this level, I have no idea. So this is one of the alternate paths you can take on this stage. And uh, you see this flying thing in the sky that drops these dudes. Survival in this game uh, really depends on you taking out the little projectiles that come your way. Uh, if you don't, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. And as you guys can see, I've been doing a pretty bad job of shooting down all the little mini projectiles that come my way. So I don't think this level is very long. I think the longest part is actually the boss itself. So we're basically on the bridge, and this is where we start fighting the, the boss of the stage. So these projectiles kind of come down in a um, set patterns. They're sort of like in a horizontal line 
orientation. And so you can just sort of shoot from left to right or vice versa and just take them all out in one swoop. So something I haven't mentioned yet is I'm actually using the directional pad as I play this game. Uh, you can use either the D-pad or the analog stick. It's sort of like, take your preference. The analog stick has more, like, uh, finesse-oriented precision, but I find the, uh, traditional D-pad movement, which was standard in the first two Panzer Dragoon games, uh, to be my preferred way of playing this game. So when I'm playing this game, I'm very much playing it like I was playing Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2 on the Sega Saturn. Or the PC, or the PlayStation 2. Because uh, the first Panzer Dragoon also did come out on both PS2 and the PC. And it actually came out here too, on the Xbox. Uh, it is, the first Panzer Dragoon is on this game. It's an unlockable. So just to FYI for anybody curious, you can play uh, Panzer Dragoon Part 1 on this game. Definitely a nice little bonus unlockable. Alright, finally. We get to switch our dragon up. Start milking those super meters again because uh, my life is starting to run low. Like many boss cutscenes, this is a cutscene you cannot skip through. One of the most interesting things about this boss is that when you get his health really low, he goes into this sort of, like, self-destruct mode. And at that point, you can't actually do any more damage. Uh, so I'll let you guys know when that happens. It'll be pretty obvious. He starts, like, convulsing. It's, it's pretty crazy, actually. Alright, so I need to switch over to my glide wing so I can use that super. Just like that. Really want to take advantage of that if I can. Every time uh, he forces you in front of him, you need to boost backwards or slow down. All these shards right here you need to try to blow through. Oops. Crap, I used the wrong... Wrong boost function. You know, for those that are really familiar with the old Panzer Dragoons, but maybe not this one, it, it this can get disorienting uh, much easier than the other ones because of the extra boost functionality and not just that, but also your weapon switching. So you're not, you know, you don't have just the boost and rotate function, but now you've got to also switch through your weapons too and make sure you're using the right attack when you need to. So there we go, I used the boost. He likes to do this pattern a lot, and that's a little annoying. But it is what it is. Like, a lot, like I said. <laughs> We're almost at our next super meter, which is good. As you can see, I kind of like to boost through uh, through this. So we just use our super meter. I got a little bit of health back. Alright, good stuff. So... Oh, crap. 
I pressed the wrong damn button. See, like I said, it's easy to get disoriented. And then you take... A, like, he hit me. He took a lot of health away by doing that. So... And when you get farther into the game, you do not want to make mistakes like that. Because, like, the final boss, for instance, will... He'll take away, like, a third of your health. So... Alright, so this is, this is where our bar, boss starts to convulse. And we just need to... We can probably just stay back. Let's see, can we stay back? I'm using the homing attack so I can home in on these enemies. By homing attack, I mean the glide wing's default attack. It basically just locks on. I should probably just call it the lock-on attack, but... I don't know. Because your regular lasers, you have to lock on with those too. I don't even know what to call it. There's probably a dedicated name for it, and it's probably in the instruction manual. So shooting the boss, as far as I know, does absolutely nothing here. And I made that mistake yesterday on stream, trying to just shoot the boss over and over again. So guys, that pretty much uh, wraps up uh, this portion of this Let's Play. We're going to do levels 6 through 10 uh, in part 2. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save and exit. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, Panzer Dragoon Ordo. Such a freaking awesome game. I kind of want to just play through the rest right now in one sitting. But I know that just to be safe, I should probably just wait. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, stop it here. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for part two. That'll come very soon. Uh, then I'll have a straight gameplay video uh, of it as well, you know, a couple weeks later. So there's my results screen for uh, those first five levels. It does save your progress. So when I go and I continue my game, it's going to start us off right at episode six. So this game saves your progress, unlike the first uh, two Panzer Dragoon games, which you had to go through from start to finish. Although it wasn't as bad for those because they weren't very long games. They were like 40 minutes long, maybe. Um, whereas this game, if you want to go through it from start to finish, it's going to take you two hours at least to get through the entire game start to finish uh, with skipping through all the story segments. With all the story seg segments, it's like another hour. So just a heads up. So, all right, guys, I'm out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon. Take it easy.